Well, Starship really has the potential to be completely revolutionary. It's going to be a real game changer um, just because of its scale, uh, because of its economics, and because of its capabilities. All, all three of those reasons will really change uh, what we do in space. Uh, it will be able to take a lot more people. Uh, so SpaceX is hoping to uh, carry humans to much further distances inside our solar system, a lot more humans at one time. And, uh, and also do it much more cost effectively, not only humans, but also taking cargo up to space, satellites, space telescopes. So uh, they're trying to, to kind of break uh, the mold on, on a lot of different fronts. So I can't emphasize enough how big <laughs> this rocket is. If you compare it to the rocket that NASA just launched, the SLS rocket, the SLS rocket was the biggest rocket we've ever successfully flown. It was 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust when it left the launch pad. That's more than the million greater than the Saturn V rocket, which was the previous record holder. Now, the, the Starship and the super heavy booster that they're going to try to launch tomorrow, that has 17 million pounds of thrust in the first stage. That's almost twice as big as the biggest rocket we have ever successfully launched. So this is a big step forward, and it's a gargantuan rocket. Uh, right now, when we launch Cruise Dragon, we could take four people uh, in there up to the space station. Starship, theoretically, could carry maybe as many as 100 people at a time. So that's a big change. Uh, the other thing, once Dragon gets into orbit, it can go to the space station, but it can't leave low Earth orbit where the space station is. And that's really not very far. The space station and where Crew Dragon fly and where the space shuttle used to fly is only about 200 miles above the surface of the Earth. That's a tiny fraction of the distance of the quarter of a million people to get to the moon. So when you with Starship, if it can be refueled on orbit, then has enough propellant to get from Earth to basically anywhere in the solar system, if you have enough time. Uh, and so we're talking about being able to go not just to low Earth orbit, but uh, back to the moon, uh, onto Mars and other destinations inside the solar system. So it could take a lot more, it could go a lot further, and it could do it cheaper, which might sound counterintuitive, but it's because it has the potential anyway of being 100% reusable. Hey. So the, and we're aiming for uh, rapid reusability. And there are some key technical challenges that have never been solved before that have to be overcome for this to be successful. The first is operating something this big with so many engines with so much complexity, there's always the more complex you make something, the more possibility there is that something will go wrong. Uh, you mentioned the, the materials uh, using stainless steel as opposed to uh, 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 using traditional aluminum uh, uh, alloys for the structure. Being able to refuel it on orbit and pump cryogenic propellants, meaning really, really cold propellants in large quantities up in space, that's also never been done before. Uh, and then and then finally getting both the, the Starship and the Super Heavy Booster back, landing them, these monstrous vehicles, catching them with these Mechazilla, I don't know, I forgot what they call it, but the big uh, uh, arms that come out from the launch pad and grab it. There's a lot of really hard things to do. What SpaceX really excels at is creating the circumstances while you're developing a new vehicle to fail safely. So look, if Starship goes kabloom, uh, when we when they try to launch it, nobody's going to get hurt. There's nobody sitting in it. All right. Uh, the only thing we're going to lose is the vehicle itself. But guess what? There's a whole bunch of other uh, vehicles ready to go. If this one doesn't work, they'll get another booster and another Starship and they'll try again. And that's very, very different from the way the traditional aerospace companies go about it. When we launch a rocket, typically the cost of the fuel is one or two percent of the total cost of the mission. Uh, so it's a very small fraction. If you look at an airliner flying uh, from point A to point B, the fuel cost is over 90 percent of the cost of, of that mission. Starship, because it's 100 percent reusable, if it can achieve rapid, affordable reusability, has the promise to get us more like that airliner, right? Where the, where the cost of the fuel is actually the major cost of the launch.